Good afternoon, everyone, uh, and welcome to uh, this session uh, being hosted and sponsored by Harmony. Uh, in this conversation, we'll have Susie from Harmony just uh, having a conversation with Josh Andrews, who really needs no introduction, but I've been asked to read an intro. Uh, he, in 2017, Josh Andrews became NFL Super Bowl champion while playing for the Philadelphia Eagles as an offensive lineman. Josh started playing football at a young age after high school. He went on to play college football at Oregon State University. After college, his athletic talents landed him positions on NFL teams, including the Minnesota Vikings, Indianapolis Colts, New York Jets, Atlanta Falcons, and New Orleans Saints. Josh and his lovely wife, Amber, have three children, and Josh is also a person living with narcolepsy. Please welcome uh, Susie and Josh Andrews. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Susie Hastings, and I'm the Director of Advocacy and Public Policy at Harmony Biosciences. And again, I am just thrilled to, to have Josh here to talk about his incredible journey through narcolepsy and excessive daytime sleepiness and his career in the NFL as a father and husband. So thank you for being here. Um, and again, Harmony Biosciences is a leading CNS company dedicated to providing innovative treatments to individuals facing unmet medical needs by putting patients at the heart of everything we do. I'm relatively new to Harmony starting in March, but I have been familiar with Harmony for many years uh, serving at the National Sleep Foundation. So with that, I will uh, turn it over to Josh so that he can tell you a little bit about himself before we get into his journey. Oh, yeah. All right. How you doing? Uh, my name is Josh Andrews. Like I said, uh, just a little bit about, my, about myself. Um, I'm originally from a Southern California city called Fontana, just part of our east of Los Angeles. Um, yeah, my uh, what's Colony High School is based in the Indian Empire. Um, my mom was stressed to her therapist growing up, you know, and felt like that was uh, one of the most like inspirational people in my life. You know what I mean? Up until this point, you know, just because she's been there for me, especially as she's been understanding of my sleepiness and is up to my, up until now. And then growing up, I, uh, I played a lot of, uh, sports, you know, I feel like that was a big part of my life up until recently, you know what I mean? Until I retired. Um, but I just feel like people just, uh, just being an athlete, I just got misunderstood as being super sleepy just because I was, uh, so involved with sports. So I didn't, it took me a while for, me to diagnose uh, the earliest time, but recollection of me really just having narcolepsy symptoms is probably like 12 years old. That's what I can remember just looking back now and thinking of all the things. But uh, yeah, I went to Oregon State University and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, go ahead. Is there anything else? Yeah, and I think um, you're relatively new to the advocacy platform. So I think before we get into where you are now, when did you first start to experience symptoms? Yeah, like like I said, like 12 years old. I felt like that was the earliest thing I can remember. I just, just a couple of distinct memories looking back is I played AAU basketball growing up and uh, my first tournament, we went to Arizona on an airplane, my first time on an airplane ever. And then all my friends are just super excited, super on the plane. And I'm just on the plane, passed out. You know what I mean? Just nodding off my head hitting my chest every five minutes. They're like, dude, what's wrong with you? Like, you know, it's just like, yeah, like I didn't look and I didn't really know what was going on. I just thought I was sleepy. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm tired. So that, that, that was some of the things that I remember growing up, you know, just being in the car, going from place to place. As soon as I get in the car, I'd just be passed out. And then when we get to the destination, I'll get up. All right, let's go. We're ready to go. Get out the car and, and I'm away and, and ready to go. Just like sudden attacks of sleep have just been a part of my life. Um, just sleep paralysis, you know, I feel like that's that's another one. You know, just having that feeling of not being able to wake up. I feel like that was probably scary for me. Just taking a nap and like, okay, I'm ready to get up, but I physically cannot get up from my snap. And it is almost like it's a scary feeling just because like, okay, am I going to wake up from this? Like, is this my trapped? Am I stuck? You know? And you wake up and like, okay, I'm good now. You know? And it's just like on and off things like that that have been occurring since the age 12. So yeah. And what was it that finally compelled you to, to consult a doctor to seek treatment that made you realize this was something beyond just being tired? And uh, so, okay, go back to high school. My senior year in high school was uh, driving 
after school, ran straight into the back of this lady. You know, I, I passed out the will. And, and it was the middle of the afternoon. It was like 2 or 3 o'clock after school. And I didn't think anything of it. I thought I was just sleeping from, from having a long day of school, you know. And I didn't, didn't really, like, pay any attention to it. I went to college that next year, and I didn't really have to drive a car because Corvallis, is, that's where Oregon State is, a small town. I, I rode around the campus in my beach cruiser. You know, and, and that's how I got, got from place to place. And you can't really help. I pray no one falls asleep while riding a bike. I never have, but I'm sure maybe they has somebody that's been, yeah, see, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, by the way. So, but it wasn't really until my wife, my Amber, my wife now, is, is where, I, where I took it seriously. You know, me, me and her, uh, this was my rookie year in the NFL. I think we were on a, came home from a bye week. And we were on like on a two lane back road in the middle of Oregon. I think we were going to go see her parents at some place. And, and I was just pushing through like, all right, I'm good. I think I'll be all right. And trying to push through driving and driving. And then uh, we almost ran off the road. You know what I mean? I feel like it didn't hit me and start taking it serious to you. So I started putting other people in harm's way. You know what I mean? I feel like that's when it hit me like, okay, I need to figure out what's going on with me. And I feel like the, the first thing I did was uh, I got my tonsils removed because like I said, my mom was a respiratory therapist this whole time. So I've I've tried a couple sleep apnea machines before and, and, and been tested before. And it always came back negative. Like, all right, you don't have sleep apnea. You sure you're good. So that was one thing. And then have my tonsils removed because it was I would, would snore like crazy. You know what I mean? Uh, my wife has a video on her phone. It's like, yeah, you sound like Toucan Sam right now. It's snoring mm -hmm. like it's 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 pretty wild. <laughs> but um after that didn't work. I was in Philadelphia the year that we won the Super Bowl. I had broken my hand and I was just practicing at that point. So I had extra time to actually like see sleep, uh, sleep doctor in Philadelphia. And, um, how many doctors did you see throughout the, between when you first started approaching doctors to, to ultimately getting a diagnosis? Because that means that also your entire college career, you did not have a diagnosis, correct? Correct. And uh, we're still playing and, it took me three times, three different sleep doctors talking to before I got that diagnosis of narcolepsy. You know what I mean, those probably from the first one I took was 19 and then, and then where I got diagnosed was 27. So. Which is a common refrain that we hear the amount of time. Yeah. I, and, and, and some of that was not for, for my own fault too, just not being proactive enough in my approach to it. You know what I mean? I think, all right, I got my sleep study. All right, I'm going to go about my day, you know? And, and, I feel like that's how I looked at it, but like I was saying, it was until I put harm, people in harm's way until I, I actually like, all right, we need to keep going. Like, no, there's something wrong with me and, and just being proactive with my approach to the doctors and, and, and advocating for myself and figuring out that, okay, you have narcolepsy. And, that, and that's when I was like, wow, man. Like, and, and my whole perception of narcolepsy was, was not necessarily neg negative, but it was almost like a joke. You know what I mean? Like that, that that's the, the, perception I had of narcolepsy when I, up, up until then, you know, and it wasn't until I did research and my like, art, this is something that is is serious, man. It, it is something that affects people on the daily and, and, and people struggle with it. And I was struggling with it at, at that point. And you've talked before about the fact that this was having access to doctors, to the best care, being a professional athlete, and still the barriers that you faced the, the long time period before you were able to get a diagnosis. Um, so how, to what would you attribute your ability to continue fighting through that, um, in the professional arena and, you know, in your personal life as well? Yeah. Uh, basically my family, you know what I mean? Like uh, I have three kids now, you know, and, and, and I want to be there for them, you know, and that's, was extremely motivational for me, my wife and my kids, like I need to be there for them. You know what I mean? I feel like that, that, that is is something that that drives me today to want to speak up and 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 use what I done my platform to help people that are dealing with something similar you know what I mean to go out and advocate for themselves and and like my family has been in the driving factor in that for sure one of the thing that things that I love about this conference is that there's people here in various stages of their of their journey um people who have long-term diagnosis is and people that are just sort of beginning. So that's why I think it's important to, to talk about sort of the, the different phases of the journey 
um, navigating symptoms without a diagnosis, finally, you know, getting a diagnosis. And then there's, you know, a new set of challenges, finding the right treatment, balancing that with your professional goals. Um, was that something that was of concern? Because in this case, it was in the NFL, but I think a lot of people in different professions worry about, you know, ramifications or, you know, with employers, was that something that you, that you faced? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, it, just being in the NFL is super competitive, you know, and, and one thing like I, I, to a certain extent, I did keep in the wraps, like couple of my coaches knew that I had something wrong with me because I, I would be dozing off in meetings and stuff and then it, it, it wasn't normal but I felt like I just kept in a rasp because if you have a guy that's <laughs> my whole entire in the career in the NFL I was I let's say I was on the bottom of the totem pole I guess you can say like I was I was fighting on a roster fighting for a roster spot year after year like nothing is guaranteed in the NFL and from my perspective, I was looking at it like, okay, if I tell the coaches that I have narcolepsy versus someone who doesn't, like, who are they going to go with? Someone who is is not having narcolepsy or someone with narcolepsy, you know what I mean? Or some type of sleeping condition. And, and that's the way I looked at it. I don't know if that was like the, the right way to go about it, but that's just my, how I went about it my whole entire time in the NFL. I mean, you know. I love that point because we've heard that from so many, you know, patients that are going through this as well. Um, there are a lot of resources for that, but navigating those conversations with employers um, and then, you know, the, the impact that has on, you know, the likelihood of getting treatment. Um, so going into the balancing roles, you've talked about your wife, Amber, your children, that was another set of challenges. Um, how would you, how do you feel? You said that Amber was, part of your life, you know, from the beginning of your, she was there when you were diagnosed, yeah, right? Correct. So she's been, she's been with you. How has her support, well, how has your um, sleep disorder impacted that relationship? How have you guys had to adapt in, in, in that way? And then we'll talk about your role as a father. Yeah, it's, 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 it has its moments, you know what I mean? Marriage is tough without a sleep disorder. And with it, it's, it, it brings on more other factors that are, that are complicated, you know, it just, one thing is driving, you know, I have to make sure that I'm, I'm especially if the kids in my car or, or the family, like if we're going on a road trip. She's driving the first bout, no matter what, like I, I, I'm i just not going to do it. You know what I mean? I'm not going to even jeopardize that. It's something that we've just evolved into, you know what I mean? Trial, a lot of trial and error with that. And um, another thing is just like to, having to take a nap throughout the day, you know, and times where we're doing stuff and my kids are only getting older, more activities are going to come along, you know, and, for me to like function the second half of the day, I have to take a nap. Like it's just things like that. Like you don't, what's it? it? You have to factor in to make a, make this thing work. You know what I mean? If I don't take a nap, if I get to five o'clock when my kids are, are, are grumpy and, and hungry and stuff, I, I have to be the one to be with them and, and keep them balanced. You know what I mean? So like my wife, my wife's not getting overwhelmed. There's just things like that. And, um, just another thing. Yeah, I feel like that, that's the main, the, the main two things that have like, that have been a, a issue, I guess you can say in, in our marriage and, and with my family, but we're working through them, especially now that I'm done playing like that. Those are just other things that I've, I'm learning as I go, you know, um, trying to figure out not necessarily work, but things that I can do to provide for the family and be there for the family. You know what I mean? And have narcolepsy be in that mix too. You know, it, it's, it's just a lot of factors that come into play. So. Yeah. And we'll talk, well, I, that's a great transition to talking about this new post football phase for you as an advocate um, which brings us to, you know, Harmony's progress at the heart program. And you've been such a wonderful spokesperson for that program. And I'd love to hear you talk a little bit more about what that experience has meant to you and, and how you've interacted with that. Yeah. You know, Harmony, Harmony has been amazing since the first day I've, I've met Rachel and really all you guys, it's been, it's been amazing. You know, um, one thing that I really appreciate about Harmony and, just how much, how genuinely they care about the patients and how 
they want their their side of the story to be told and they're just as important as any more important than any any drug that you can take you know what i mean their voices speaks volume way more than any drug can but uh uh really the progress of the heart is just bringing resources available the first the first thing i want to say is like if i didn't play in the nfl like or had great access to all these doctors i don't know where i would be you know what i mean and and Honestly, I I don't know if I'd be dead, but I feel like God has brought me to this point where they align me for a reason, just to to speak up to the people that don't have the resources that I always had access to. You know what I mean? And and really just through all backgrounds, you know, I feel like that is something that I align with harmony so well. Just be being able to bring awareness to all right, how do we get resources and and speak out to the people that don't have insurance, you know what I mean? That have these still sleep problems, you know, I feel like that's like why I've wanted to partner with them and do this progress of the heart, you know what I mean? And I feel like that's the big reason why I did I'm doing this now. Yeah. And we talked earlier and you said that for you, sports and physical activity was an outlet for you to sort of get out your aggression, you know, against, you know, your, your sleep problems and that now you've sort of funneled that into your work as an advocate. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like football has been just a outlet for me to just let out my frustrations with narcolepsy. And, um, really is it's exercise has been like almost better than medicine to a certain extent, as far as me. Talk about that more. Cause we were talking about the importance of self-care and I know that that's an important theme for everyone um, with, with sleep disorders, but you've said that it's been such a critical part of your ongoing treatment that you consider it part of your regimen, just like any medication or. Absolutely. Um, actually, I feel like I've, I've exercised the, the, the day I die, you know, it, it's been such a beneficial thing for me, especially starting it out the day like that. Um, I don't know. I just, I feel like I get an energy boost from working out and, I can just tell night and day. My wife can tell night and day when I don't work out in the morning compared to when I do, you know what I mean? And just gets my day started off right. And it, it's more than narcolepsy. I feel like it's a, it's a mental health thing too, to a certain extent, you know, and, and just having that outlet to release your frustration and, and anger and just get all your, your, yeah. And now that I'm done playing, yeah, I'm, I'm still working out. I feel like that's like going to be part of my regimen in the morning till forever you know and 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 advocacy now and share using what i've learned and and what i've done and, and to help the person who's who's hesitant to go speak to the doctor or, or to doesn't know about these resources out there you know what i mean using what i've done to help other people that's what i've wanted to do and that's why harmony has been so such a benefit beneficial to where we're at now what would you say was the most important piece of of your of your journey in in terms of getting to where you are now? Man, just and just find, yeah, okay, find a community. You know what I mean? Um, for like uh, Julie over at Project Sleep, you know, I feel like they've been so helpful to me. Just realizing that I'm not alone in this, you know, there's there's other people dealing with this, and and for a while there, I was like isolated, not knowing that. And now I found harmony, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm here now talking to other people that have narcolepsy. It, it's just, I uh, felt like that alone has been such a beneficial like factor to my my spirit and my soul, just like feeling the love that are that are coming from other people, so. And how do you envision the future of advocacy? What pivotal roles, what do you think people in the in industry can do, people in the other patient advocacy groups? No, it's just the beginning. You know, uh, there's there's so much we can do. You know, I, I was just talking about, I think we were talking about it earlier, like the Project Sleep has a hotline out there that, you know what I mean? Like, what do you, what do you go to when you have questions about sleep? You know, and it's just things like that. You know, just getting resources and information out there for people that, all right, yeah, I might have something going on, but like, who do I turn to, to figure that out? You know, I just want to just bring awareness to these resources out there because there's tons of stuff out there. I feel like people just don't really know about it. And I feel like um, that's why I want to use my platform to get that out there and, and help people understand like, yeah, there's always something you can do, someone you can talk to, to help you get to where you need to go. So, yeah. 
How did you initially find the the courage and the inclination to come forward in a in such a public way? Man, community, like I said, uh, honestly, it, it, Julie was a big help for that. You know what I mean? She's so outspoken about her narcolepsy and feel like it made me want to speak out more about my in my journey and my what I've been through and and just hearing other people's stories. Honestly, it, it's, it's been great. I feel like when I hear the other people's stories, man, it just makes me feel like I want to share my story and doing that has helped me. So I'm, I'm wondering what it does for other people too, you know? So. And that's one of the things that was so interesting when we were talking in so many ways, I would think, you know, um, having a professional, it's such a tiny fraction percentage of people that ever reach the NFL. And you would think, okay, that dream has nothing to do with the everyday person, but it, there are so many similarities and the, the the fears that you have within your family and navigating with employers and, and all of that, it translates. Everyone has their own, their own version of that, I think in their life. Absolutely. I feel like people try to put a box on us because we have narcolepsy. And I feel like that's not the case at all. You can put your, you can put your, you can do anything you want to. Honestly, you just got to put your mind to it. You know what I mean? Have the right people around you and, and, that's what I've been doing and, and continue to do. And I hope to spread that message to anyone that had come across with narcolepsy, man. You can put, you can do anything you want to. If you just have the people, right people in your corner, the right mindset and, and yeah. When you were navigating um, the process to get your diagnosis, was there anything, any advice you think was, was particularly valuable to, that could expedite, you know, to, to talk more to doctors, to talk more efficiently with doctors? It's a great question. Um, like I said, there's a ton of resources, you know what I mean? Community. I feel like I'm going to speak to people that have been through it before, you know, and then go and talk to your doctor. Like, okay, what have they been through? And how can I like tailor that to my own personal situation? And, 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 explain that to my doctor, what the symptoms I'm feeling, you know, right. Journaling for like journaling things down. Like it's been helpful for me just to, okay, all right, this is what I've been doing. This is what's been going on. And I feel like that's been a true help for me. Like when I, especially when I talk to doctors, like, all right, I'm experienced this and this and this. And I feel like that's sped up the process to a certain extent. Right. What has been the response from your fellow athletes and your, your friends in the NFL since you've had this um, yeah. transition to to advocate no it's, it's it's been positive you know what i mean a lot of a lot of my friends are asking me questions like man what is narcolepsy and then that's exactly what i was like all right perfect you know just just raising that awareness and explaining to them what narcolepsy is and what sleep conditions are out there and and how you can get resources are available to you when you have some type of sleep disorders you know and really that's the biggest thing and, and me coming out and really just sharing my experience it's just like okay like I, i've seen i've seen some of my former teammates they're like okay maybe i should go sleep get my get a sleep test now you know and i feel like i'm just gonna keep pushing that envelope and keep keep making sure that happens you know that and that's exactly what i'm trying to do and going to do so yeah and before we close and take questions i want to go back because this i see this um concern coming up more and more when you did have your diagnosis and you were talking to your coaches how did they did you feel how did they how did they respond in the moment did you I felt like there was really just one coach that I've like really like sat down and talked to uh, Jeff Stalin he's the offensive line coach with the Philadelphia Eagles um and I really just had, had the conversation I'm like man I, I I know how there's something I know you've seen me sleep in the meetings before and, and, and you've called me he definitely called me out a couple of times um but it felt like it's positive, you know what I mean? Especially him, like I, I didn't grow up without a father, with the father. So just having him as a father figure just has been super helpful, you know, and um, and he's understanding, you know, and especially when you explain it to him, I've learned before I was just, like I said before, I was hesitant to tell coaches because I didn't know how they were going to react. But if you explain your situation and, and where you're at, as, as long as you're doing what you need to do and, they will work with you. That's what I've learned. So. Thank you so much. And I'm sure we'll have some questions. So with that, I just want to say, Josh, on behalf of Harmony, thank you so much for taking the time to share your incredible story with us. And additionally, I want to express our heartfelt gratitude to the Hypersomnia Foundation for this incredible conference. And more than anything, I want to thank the patients who have taken time from your schedules to be here today.
Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Josh? Thank you, Harmony. Thank you, Josh. One question I had is, um, you know, the dual role of being a parent, living with a rare sleep condition, um, and also being a professional, can you speak about how you've kind of communicated this to your family and kids and how they created compassion and space while growing, um, while navigating this? Because I know this is a trending topic of how to communicate to your little ones about the accommodations that you need in your home life as well. Yeah, really, it's just my my, my oldest one, my daughter. She's five right now, and she's she's was been with me through three teams now, and she was the one like I, it. It's been not hard to explain to her, but like, all right, daddy needs to take a nap right now. You know what I mean? I, I so I can be there for you down the road, you know, or later on today, you know. And for my youngest, well, they they don't really understand yet, you know. That but for my five year old, it's just it's like she's done a she's been she's super sweet. And she 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 gets it. She's like, okay, dad needs some time to rest right now. So like, I feel like as they get older, being able to explain to them what actually narcolepsy is and like what the condition is, and I feel like that's going to be a big factor. Just it's going to be important, just because I don't want them to get misconstrued. Like, okay, why is dad so like lazy? You know what I mean? I, I don't want them to get that in their head from an early age. So just explaining to them what narcolepsy is and 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 what are the symptoms and, and explaining them to them what. I have to do to be there for them. I feel like that's going to be crucial. Yeah. I was just curious as to therapies when you were playing, were you able to take any medications? Was that available to you as a, a professional player when these are not medications that would be traditionally used in the sport, I would imagine? Yeah. Uh, I've, t I've taken multiple medications. Um, I'm not going to go into details about them, but uh, there's a thing called the therapeutic use exemption with the NFL that allows you to take certain types of medication. And um, I've some things I didn't want to really experiment with me just because I don't want to shake the boat and have me pop positive for a test. And I didn't really know what was allowed and what is not allowed. So I kept it pretty basic for the most part. But now that I'm done playing, there's some some things that I definitely want to try or that I'm ex going to experiment with. But still, an ongoing process is trying to figure out the right combination. You know? Um. So I guess, what advice do you have for people who want to get into advocacy for like a job or in like who have tried to reach out to people and just don't seem to know the right people? Um, just because they're really passionate about it and want to do it, what advice do you have? Yeah, um, I reach out to Julie now. Uh, <laughs> no, um, I would say, um, like when you get other people on board with you, I feel like that 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 makes a difference. You know what I mean? When you, uh, it, it's it's not necessarily tough to go on things by yourself, but. When you when you get people on board that really understand, I feel like that's when you make a difference. I feel like that's that's really the, the advice I can give you. I don't know if that if that helps or not. Yeah, uh, you talked about falling asleep in meetings. Um, the, did you struggle through high school and and college um, in class? Oh yeah, I I, it, I have count I. I countless pictures of me passed out in class from my friends it's, it's at first it was embarrassing but then I definitely learned to roll with the punches and you know what I mean just because the more I fought back the more that would come learn that for sure but yeah I definitely struggled I, I, I feel like I struggled more in college than I did high school just because just be from lectures and stuff um but I wasn't the great the greatest student, but I, I feel like I made up for it after, you know what I mean, with my studies. You know, I had to put in the extra work, but study hall and stuff too. So like I said, I've had I've had all the resources available to me to succeed, you know, and, and that's not the case for a lot of people, you know, and just just from me being an athlete. So yeah. Um, you said that you saw three doctors, three sleep doctors before you finally got a diagnosis. Um was there like a breakthrough moment um, with that doctor? Was there anything that kind of 
put that over the edge or. Okay. So the first doctor I had, um, I, my mom reckoned I was coming straight out of college. It was during winter break and I was 19 at that point. And I went back home to, and she was like, yeah, you probably should get a sleep study. Since she's like calling me every week and saying you're falling asleep in class. So I was like, okay, that's fair. Um, so I did that one and I, I didn't really follow up with that doctor just because I had to go back to school. So I didn't get a really chance to go back home. I didn't really go back home after that until after I graduated, just because we were doing good in football, you know, we were going to bowl games and I didn't really get in. And then the second time I was in Philadelphia, well, that's when I really like, yeah, I got sleep studied. I got a sleep study done twice in Philadelphia. And the second one, like I did it and I was like, all right, I don't have, I don't have sleep apnea. I already knew that. So I'm not going to do this again. This is a waste of my time, you know? And then third time, that's when I was with Amber. She was like, okay, you need to keep, go back and, and make sure like get tested for something else. Cause like you don't have sleep apnea, obviously there's something else going on. And that's when I got diagnosed with narcolepsy. So, yeah. And I think we have time for one more question. If there's another one. I just wanted to ask about uh, your experience with cataplexy. Yeah, uh, definitely have cataplexy moments, you know. Um, it's not as severe as, as uh, people I've heard before. You know, it's usually when I'm, like, laughing. Or, like, I'll, like, buckle a little bit. Or, thank God, I remember one time, I was with the, we were playing against the Saints. Uh, I, I was on the Saints. We were playing against the Eagles. And we had scored a touchdown. I, like, I was like, yeah! And I was like, oh, oh, like... <laughs> All right. What was that? It's just, but um, I feel like it's few and far between. You know, it, it's I still I for sure have cataplexy, but it's not as severe as as, as other people that I've heard experience. So yeah. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Can we get another round of applause for Stephen Jock? <laughs>